Football is back, and Bet Online is your number one information source for all your sports wagering info with all the up to the minute stats, news, scores, and matchup breakdowns. Get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football at your fingertips with Bet Online's real time updates on statistics, news, and odds. From week one all the way to the college football playoff and Super Bowl, Bet Online gives you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BLEAV, that's B L E A V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Tiger fans, welcome to another episode of Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. I am the Corey C. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We don't want you to miss an upcoming episode, so hit that notification bell. Of course, you can find us on YouTube, but also the Apple Podcast app, the Google Podcast app, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts. So follow the show and tell every Tiger that you know. And remember, when you support Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, it all helps the cause, which is the I love, Jackson State University. And it is homecoming week, and joining me to talk about the foe, the Alabama State Hornets, a team that asked for it. Their head coach asked for this <laughs> under some different, different circumstances, but nonetheless, he asked for it, so we gave it to him. Homecoming with the Alabama State Hornets, and of course, joining me to talk about it. As always, he's a familiar friend of the show, color analyst for the Hornets Network, Mr. Kamari Darrington. Welcome back to Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. Hey, I always enjoy being on with you guys. You guys do a great job, so uh, always good to be with you. All right, we appreciate it, and we appreciate you and your work as well. You do a great job, and you're pulled in a number of different directions. I know it's not just Alabama State, so just update our audience on what all you have going on this season. Well, of course, I actually had to do play by play two weeks ago for uh, for uh, for the live stream. They had it with Alcorn State, but uh, for Alabama State. But also, I also do um, um, volleyball at Auburn Montgomery, did their home games, and also I've got a couple of games in the S uh, the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, the SIAC. Matter of fact, I'll be uh, I'll be uh, doing the game Saturday between Edward Waters and Tuskegee. And then, of course, uh, the first Saturday in November is Tuskegee at Miles, and that's going to be a, a great mm -hmm. game. Both games should be pretty good. Uh, Edward Waters, uh, of course, coming in this week is uh, pretty uh, pretty hot, three in a row. But uh, they're going to be at Tuskegee's homecoming, so uh, it's going to mm -hmm. be an interesting atmosphere uh, there, uh, standing room only, literally. And then, of course, Tuskegee and Miles is a great rivalry as well. So looking forward to both of those games, but also looking forward to uh, – Catching this game as well uh, after I get done on Saturday. All right, man. Good stuff, man. Busy, busy, man. But I'm sure you wouldn't have it any other way. So, again, we appreciate right. you for squeezing in a few minutes. So let's get right to it. Coach Eddie Robinson, I already mentioned him, but his second season and back in year one, he led the team to his most wins since 2015 with six wins. So what was your sense of the expectations going into this season from both the fan base and the team itself? Well, I think uh, obviously – Going into this year, I think there was a lot of confidence as, uh, you know, there was a team that was coming off a six and five season. And then just looking at the, the the two games that really much pretty much were the measuring stick games for them last year, the, the game against the Florida A&M where they were leading in the fourth quarter. And then, of course, Florida A&M made the plays in the fourth quarter win. And then for Jackson State, a game that went you know, about two and a half quarters where Alabama State was, was hanging on. But, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the the Tigers did their thing in the, in the third and the fourth quarter and pulled away. And then, of course, the fiasco after the game. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, I think uh, coming into the season, I think the team felt like they were moving in the right direction, six and five. I mean, um, obviously, the, the last two – losing the last two games left a little bit of a better taste in the mouth of the team. I think coming into this year, they felt that they could, um, they could at least compete, uh, at least compete for the Eastern Division Championship. But obviously, that's out of reach now. And 
you know, um, I don't think people expected them to be two and three right now. I think they expect it to be a little bit better record. But, I mean, you look at the games that they played this year, um, obviously the offense has been uh, uh, has been uh, uh, fair at best. Um, and that's probably being generous. Uh, the defense is playing as well as it can at times. Uh, and the special teams, uh, depending on who's out there, is, uh, has, been a, has been an issue at times. So it's been an up and down season. Um, uh, of course, more down than up, probably. Uh, and they got a, a nice win at homecoming on Saturday, but I'm sure that didn't make a lot of people, didn't make a lot of uh, fans uh, uh, a lot more confident. But, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting coming into this week. I think the, the best game they played all year was actually on the road at Florida A&M. That was in a loss. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see what happens Saturday. And, of course, it's homecoming. So uh, I know Jackson State wants to put on a show and, uh, see if uh, Alabama State can kind of uh, slow the show down a little bit. Yep, and uh, <laughs> two and three overall this season. One and two in conference play. A uh, win against uh, you mentioned Bethune Cookman, and then the losses to Alcorn and FAMU. Now there was the also the opening week win over Southern, but that didn't count in the SWAC standings, correct? Right, that's correct. That didn't count. Okay, it's but just it some still incons- a huge win for Alabama State. Mm-hmm. We don't they don't beat Southern very often, so it was a it was a good win. For, it was a, I mean you know you, you look at the serious history, it's all Southern pretty much. So uh, mm-hmm. it was a good win for Alabama State just to to beat a team of that caliber and and to beat that that program. Uh, I think it was a big win for for Coach Robinson early on. Mm-hmm. Oh, we know exactly the feeling because we played yes. them. It didn't count, but we beat them as well. <laughs> so so we right. absolutely know. <laughs> but with this team, been a little bit of inconsistency this season. What would you say the identity is of this team or ha- has it even really been able to establish one? Well, I think obviously this is a defensive team. I mean, mm-hmm. they rely a lot on their defense um, because the defense is, is very, very good because Colton Adams, the reigning SWAC player of the week after his performance last week, uh, you know, two weeks ago against uh, – Alcorn State he had his first single digit game, single t- digit tackle game. You know, instead of you know games where he's been injured, uh, but he's been healthy the last couple of years. So I think he he came back and uh, looked like the the Bubba Adams that we're, we're used mm-hmm. to seeing. Um, and uh, and then I think um, you know obviously Adrian Maddox has, has emerged as a, a really good uh, player in the secondary and uh, a guy we didn't talk about at the beginning of last year, but he kind of emerged as one of one of the best players and. Um, you know, uh, the defensive line has played well, having trouble getting to the quarterback, but they, 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 when they are able to get to the quarterback, uh, they create some, create some things. And this is a very opportunistic defense. You know, they, 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 they feed off of getting turnovers and, uh, and, and make, and, and getting sacks, getting stops on, on fourth down. So, uh, that, that's been a problem at times for them this year. You know, the defense has been susceptible to bigger plays than maybe in the past, but, uh, definitely this is a team that relies on this defense and then, uh, relies on the running game as well, and um, you know, offensively, they, they've had a couple of different identities. Um, mm. You know, now they're going with the the two quarterback system, which uh, has has been effective at times, and at times has made people scratch their heads. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens this week. But I think um, I think coach is committed to sticking to it until it just completely uh, falls out, and uh, we'll see how that happens. So talk a little bit about that quarterback situation. Very interesting to say the least, of course, Demetrius Davis and Damon Stewart. Aside from Davis being the team's second leading rusher, I think uh, I don't, it looks like neither guy seems to have really just separated himself from the other. I know you talk about you know having two quarterbacks. So is it pretty much a two quarterback system or do you feel like he's really he's searching for that guy who can really kind of take the lead? I think for right now, uh, I think he he likes what he sees from the two quarterbacks. Um, obviously, Damon is a little bit better passer. I think most people thought that he earned the starting job after his performance against Fam. You, but you gotta understand, uh, you take away that pick six, he had a pretty good game against a, a very good defense. And so I think uh, people thought after that point that Damon Stewart had had earned the starting job. But I think uh, you know going, but I think. You know, he still has that, that confidence in Demetrius Davis as a runner. And, of course, Davis has proven that he can make plays with his legs. And uh, maybe not as good of a throw as Damon Stewart, but maybe you have a, a separate package for each guy. So I think, you know, it's an interesting situation. I think, you know, obviously Coach Robinson has confidence in both guys. I think he's um, I think he's very loyal to both guys. And I think he wants to to make sure that um, you know whatever he decides to go, whichever way he decides to go, it, it gives the team the best chance to win. 
And you look at the game against Alcorn State, uh, they ran for 250 yards with two quarterbacks. And then, of course, uh, with uh, Bethune Cookman, uh, they didn't uh, they didn't uh, have as an effective of a game, but both guys uh, came in and, and played pretty well, save the, the late turnover by Davis. So um, I think fans, I think most fans would rather see, honestly, rather see Damon Stewart as the all time starting quarterback. But you can't uh, you can't uh, you can't deny that Davis when he's in there and he's running the ball effectively. It does help Alabama State move the ball. So I think, like I said, I think he's going to stick with this two quarterback. Uh, flipping back and forth until someone does surge ahead. And uh, maybe in his mind, no one has done that yet. Uh, but obviously the skill set's a little bit different between both guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think for right now, I think he's going to stick with this until, like I said, until the wheels fall off. <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. just it's one of those things that, you know, so, so, some teams, you know, if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Some teams, they, they make it work. So I mm -hmm. think Alabama State uh, is trying to make it work right now. And then, interestingly, the former Alabama State quarterback, Miles Crawley, who transferred to Grambling, he's currently second leading passer in the SWAC. So he's doing I some. Think, I think most people, I think uh, some fans think that Alabama State's starting quarterback is playing for Grambling right now. Uh -huh. So, right. You know, it's, it's, the quarterback situation has been uh, has been interesting. And of course, Alabama State lost a, um, a couple of other guys as well, uh, transferring out to Corey Mayer going to New Mexico. Yep. Uh, Urshot mm -hmm. Davis, more of a graduate transfer. Uh, he he goes to uh, goes to Troy. Urshot was the leader of that defense, and so that kind of has, has fallen on top. Uh, that's kind of fallen now towards quote uh, Bub Adams. Of course, he has a, he has the the ability to handle that. But um, you know, I think uh, you know lo losing a guy like Merritt, uh, not not the the fastest guy, but uh, you know he's a guy that, that gets the tough yardage and um, it was a really uh, really serviceable back for them and. Then of course Miles Crawley. Uh, I, I I liked Miles Crawley. I really did. I think every time he was in there, he showed a lot of poise. He showed a lot of toughness, and um, he uh, he was very accurate with the football. And um, you know now you know you know you watch you watch him play for Grambling, and it's like you know it's like kind of watching a um, kind of watching your your your, your ex with the, with the new guy, and she's <laughs> she's pretty happy, right? You know, kind of made, you know, kind of like gosh, what is it? You know, mm -hmm. come on back, come on back. Yeah. But listen, I think um, I think the fans are, um, you know, they're they, they're gonna rock with the guys that they're on that are on the team. They're, you know, uh, they, they wish Miles well, and they'll see him in a couple weeks, so uh, they'll be reacquainted. But um, you know, they're rocking with the guys that they've got, and and, and they should. You know, the, mm -hmm. those those two guys have earned the right to to, to play for the starting job, and, and they play, they played well at times, and at times, of course, they made mistakes. But hey, you know, that's just that's the way it is. It's uh, you know, you move on. And you, you go with the guys that you got. Right. Yeah, I mean, definitely big losses there. You talked about Mary, the running back transfer in New Mexico. And I think other than the Alcorn State game, which was an overtime loss, the team has right. struggled a bit running the ball this season. There was a 14-yard rushing performance versus FAMU, 0. 0.6 yeah. yards per carry. Uh, you know, that obviously won't get it done. So what's what's going wrong with the running game? Uh, I think part of it is, you know, obviously the offensive line. The offensive line on block, you can't run. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think also uh, when uh, when they started the, the the first game of the season against Southern, they went with a lot of this uh, direct snap. And next week when they played Miles, you know, eventually Miles, you know, caught up to that, and they didn't run the ball as well. And I, I just think it's uh, they you know, Alabama State doesn't have a featured back, and I, and I think it's it, you know you can't get a rhythm. You know, they haven't really gotten a rhythm with one guy that says, okay, this is going to be a guy, you know, two or three series. We can go two or three straight series with this guy as a lead back. You know, kind of similar to the quarterback situation. Guys have had their moments, um, but it just hasn't been one consistent guy that you can say, okay, this is going to be our guy when the chips are down, that we're going to go with him. You know, Demetrius Davis being your second leader rusher, not necessarily the best thing. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, it, it's, it's 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 that's the way the offense has gone this year, and uh, I think going into this game um, and going into the rest of the season, if they can find one guy that can you know have that consistent uh, consistent presence uh, running the football other than Davis. I think it can make Alabama State's offense even better. With that inconsistent quarterback play and then this ineffective running game, and you mentioned it, the uh, offensive line, but it's going to be easy to question that unit. So has that been a big concern? I know Robert Austin is the perennial all-swag selection. Right. He's still there. So is that a big concern? 
It's a concern. I think the the guys are, are, are getting a little bit better uh, each. They're getting better each week. I think it's gonna. Uh, I think it's gonna galvanize the the guys up front to really play well. Because because when you think about it, it's the trenches is where the game is really won. And I, I think with uh, with this offensive line, if they if they can hold, if they can uh not, well not hold for penalties, but if they can hold their blocks. Yeah, uh, they can hold their blocks. You know, well the, the guys can make plays, and we saw that. Um, really against uh, Al- Alcorn State when when uh, Alabama State was able to run the ball really really well in the first half, I, I think um, it, and you know a lot of guys that were in there this year they didn't play a whole lot last year you know they got a, they got some uh, got a few new pieces up front but you know it's, it's game five you know game it's going to be a uh, game five game six now so you know everybody's not new anymore you know everybody's played mm-hmm. a few game, games to get the, to get to get things right so. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens this week, and uh, you know the, the challenge I think for them this week is is going to be to um, to protect whoever's throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. I think running the ball is going to be um, going to be even tougher this week against the Jackson State defense. And listen, you got to score in this league. I mean, you know, 15, 16 points a game is just not going to get it done. You're going to mm-hmm. have to stretch the field. And so I think this week for Alabama State. You know the key is is to stretch the field and 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 try to get try to make big plays on the try to make big plays in the passing game and that's gonna um, that's gonna mean the offensive line is gonna have to protect and gonna have to hold. Speaking of stretching the field and that passing game, uh, last season Keyshawn Johnson led the team in yards, catches, and touchdown receptions, and yeah. this year looks like he's continuing that success. So talk about him and who are some other pass catches that we should look out for. Uh, Keyshawn has been the, really, you know, he missed the first four games last year. Mm. And he came in and uh, really just took over that mantle. Jeremiah Hickson was the main uh, receiver mm-hmm. going into the season. And uh, the, both uh, both were really effective. But Keyshawn Johnson really emerged as the, as the number one guy. And this year he has done that as well. He only had two targets against Alcorn State, which, which boggled my mind. Mm. That he only had two targets in, in, in the game where he is – you know, he was leading the swack and in, in receive uh, yards per catch, and receiving yards, and all, all all those things. So he's one of those guys that I think really um, you have to game plan for him because he he's he's the he he's the main weapon. And uh, of course, last week he caught I think seven or eight balls for um, for ninety nine yards. So he they they got back to getting him the football. And then of course uh, Isaiah Scott, he had a touchdown last week. Um, he's kind of been. You know, they're kind of looking for that second guy. You know, it hasn't really materialized yet. I think Isaiah Scott is going to be uh, is going to be that guy. Um, and then, of course, you've got uh, the, the tight ends. I mean, we have not used the tight ends effectively really last few years. Uh, A.J. Lewis has finally caught a couple of passes. Uh, Jace Medlock, you know, these, these, these are big 6'3", six, 6'4", six, guys that are really big targets and um, they have not really been able to um, to get going, getting those guys the football. A lot of uh, what Alabama State is doing is, you know, throwing the ball out to you know Johnson, see if he can make a make a guy miss, and then you know kind of keep doing that, and then going over the top with them. You know, so, so somebody's going to have to step in and uh, really uh, really take that second role to take some pressure off of Johnson because you know as the season goes along and people keep seeing how good Johnson is, and Johnson's really really good. They're gonna start to kind of shade some other guys over to him, so we got to have uh, Isaiah Scott, a uh, Tyree Saunders, you know, just a couple of those guys, and even our tight ends, and even our running backs out of the backfield. I think Drawn Howe is a really good pass catcher out of the backfield. Uh, Jalen Sultan has been uh, really effective out of the backfield as well, and so to get these running backs in in the passing game too could be effective as well. Right, and you talk about the offense needing to step it up a notch in order, you know, for this team to be successful. Right. But the saving grace has been defensively. Uh, yes. Alabama State is ranked third in the SWAC, only giving up 18 points a game and 304 yards, and so far has held every opponent to 24 points or under. So I know you talked about it earlier, but more specifically, what's kind of been working for this unit defensively? Well, they 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 have guys that know how to get to the ball, and starting with with Colton Bubba Adams. I mean, the guy just just knows where the football is every all the time. He's always around the ball. And then also up front, Stefan Young role has really uh, become a really f- a big force on the defensive end. Uh, is really uh, – and Traquan Thomas as well coming off the edge. is really – the two ends have really emerged and really have changed games as well with, with their play. And I think it's 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 helped the linebackers in the, in the, in the, in the back five, back 
back seven, if you will, um, really, uh, really um, uh, defend well uh, and, and, and cover well also. And, uh, of course, Adrian Maddox, who emerged mm-hmm. at, at the beginning of last season, um, uh, again, secondary has played well. Uh, you got Kale Jackson Jr. James Burgess had a huge game against Alcorn State. He had a uh, uh, an interception. Had almost had a had, almost had two picks. He had one, and also a, a return of a, a, a block kit for a touchdown. And uh, really, I think that really uh, raised his confidence as well. Uh, he was he did a very very good job against Alcorn's receivers in the second half and in that overtime session. So he was he was a very vital in, in keeping Alabama State in that football game. So I think the, the back seven has uh, has has played well, but it's been the front four, especially those two ends, that have really emerged and um, has uh, made Alabama State's defense as tough as it's been the last few years. Maybe not as uh, um, not as opportunistic as they've been in the past, not creating a lot of turnovers this year, but just a solid defense that they can get out the field on third down, and they they have um they have a knack of making big plays when they need them. So if you know you're not Coach Eddie Robinson, but I know you, you talk to him and you hear him in the press conferences. What would you say he's talking about and telling his team is the key to victory? If they were to, if they're able to leave Jackson with the win on Saturday, they did X, Y, and Z. Well, first of all, they cannot make mistakes. It's not a team that this is not a team that can overcome mistakes. So they've got to they've got to limit those. And they've got to take advantage of opportunities that they do get because they're not going to get a lot of them. And when you do get those opportunities, you have to take take advantage of them. And then, uh, of course, uh, and, and especially on the offense side of the ball, the offense is not the offense cannot overcome mistakes. And when they're playing well, they're playing mistake free football. They're moving the ball five six yards a play, and you know they're not committing you know silly pre snap or or during play penalties. Defensively, the key is to keep keep guys in front of them, mm-hmm. keep everybody in front of them. Don't let it get anybody over the top, and uh, they've been able to do that for the most part this year. Um, that's been the key. Special teams, um, you know, uh, Jaden John got a uh, was special teams player of the week. He had two field goals last week. Um, you know, the confidence, his confidence, uh, and, and and you know, if they get if they can't get the ball in the end zone, they're going to have to score field goals. And he's been shaky at times. Last week played uh, did, did of course did a lot better, but of course missed the field missed the field goal uh, in overtime that that uh, ended up uh, being the difference in in the in the Alcorn State one wasn't all his wasn't all on him, but you know mm-hmm. obviously when you're a kicker you know you got one job you got to kick it to the upright. Uh-huh. So I think his I think you know his performance last week and the fact that coach keeps sending him out there, I think mm-hmm. you know. You know he he has to keep continue to build his confidence because he's going to need him. I think he this this week he's really going to need him uh, to 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 knock a field goals through. It. They can't get in the end zone, but but the key I, and I, I keep saying I say it, I say that all the time on on, on radio or whether it's uh, you know the, the stream for the Horn Sports Network. You've got to score at least twenty eight to thirty points to, uh, a game to have a shot. Mm-hmm. You you cannot you cannot kick five field goals in a game and think you're going to win. And uh, the most Alabama State has scored this year is is twenty points. Uh, that's just that's just not you know against the Florida A and M you know they 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 held them to twenty three, but still mm-hmm. you know their highest total has been twenty. You know against the Jackson State you know their their explosive offense against a, a FAMU against a Southern you know normally twenty points is not going to get the job done. So they're mm-hmm. going to have to find a way to create opportunities for themselves, create short fields for themselves. And then when they do get those short fields, and they had a couple short fields against Alcorn State, mm-hmm. where you know the game could have been, you know, uh, instead of thirteen to ten at halftime, they they had a wide open. Johnson was wide open in the end zone, and Stewart missed him by like thirty yards. <laughs> he threw he threw the ball so far. He threw the ball so far. He was throwing it to one of the the, the cheerleaders. But um, you know so those those little things right there that may not show up in the box score. But they uh, they 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 become glaring when you when you look back at the games and you watch them. You say, man, you know they're they're, they're good they're good enough to win games. They play they play well enough to win the games that they're in. Mm-hmm. But if they want to get to the next level, they're gonna have to can, they're gonna have to play mistake free football. I'm not not saying they'll not get any penalties. You're gonna get penalties in the game. But to limit the mistakes and to limit the the self inflicted wounds, and and that's what a lot of it has been. For Alabama State, the last few years has been self-inflicted stuff that they've done. So, uh, so, well, like I said the best game they played this year has been on the road, really. 
mm-hmm. uh, against uh, against Florida A and M. So maybe they can bring that uh, to Jackson on Saturday. All right. Well, we are looking forward to it again. Homecoming, so it will be a packed house. We know uh, the Jackson State crowd will be there. Alabama State yeah. likes to travel as well, so <laughs> we expected a great atmosphere. Beautiful football weather. So yes. obviously we want everyone to come out. It will be a game that's televised on ESPN Plus. But if you're within driving distance, so if you can catch a flight, make sure you be there because it should be a go. It should be a great game. Uh, obviously, all the stuff that happened last year, I think, is one on the bridge. I'm sure the fans still remember it. Uh-huh. The fans probably still remember it. But I think, you know, you got, you got, you know, it's not Coach Prime coaching. It's, it's T.C. Taylor, and he's done a great job, obviously. But, uh, you know, and I think Alabama State, you know they're gonna they're gonna play like a desperate team on Saturday. Mm-hmm. I just I just feel that they 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 need this win, um, even though you know the SWAC the, the division title might not be in reach, but there's still a lot of games left, mm-hmm. and uh, they want to get the five. They want to uh, get another winning season. This is the game they've got to have. I think just for a psychological uh, edge for them. Uh, they need to get this win on Saturday, and uh, obviously Jackson State uh, playing at home homecoming. Uh, you know, your 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 place is going to be packed, and so they're going to want to try to put on a show against uh, Alabama State's defense, and um, we'll see what happens. Uh, looking forward to seeing it. Uh, hopefully, uh, um, from my from my side, hopefully, <laughs> can play uh, can play well and, and give themselves a chance to win. And that's all that that they can do is give themselves a chance to win. And then, of course, for Jackson State, I, I know that uh, you, you you got some things planned in store. Uh, if um, if you are able to uh, come through and get the win. So uh should be a great game, should be a great atmosphere, and uh, should be uh, two good teams going at it. Absolutely. All right, Kamari, as usual, we appreciate it. This is becoming an annual thing for us, so oh, yeah. we always look forward to hearing from you. So keep up the great work, man, and we'll catch you next time. Same to you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club is presented by Bet Online.